The baby fat minnow is good, but you need to check this one out. Fly, fish, food, 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 food. All right, we, we know that the baby fat minnow works. Uh, talking to Lance with his Euro streamer game, he had this idea to tie the baby fat minnow, but on a jig hook. So I started playing with some ideas and this one is kind of the one that stuck. So we're going to basically tie a baby fat minnow on a Hannock 480 size 6 with a 4.6 mil tungsten bead. So it's kind of a challenge to get the minnow all to sit right behind that the, the bead, but um, I'll, I'll kind of show you how I dial that in. First things first, I'm going to start out with some 0 0.015 lead and that's mostly just so I can seat the bead so it doesn't wiggle around just like that. So once I have that set up the tying is pretty straightforward. I'm just going to take some white thread and dress the hook first of all. Then I've got this what looks like just a big old white cloud of craziness. It's, it's a spay hackle with chickaboo pelt and I'm using one of the feathers that kind of looks like this. It's one of the, um, it's not right on the very tip where the, all the chickaboo is. It's a little bit further down. So you have these little bit longer wispy fibers and that's going to be the tail. So I'll tie that in right here at the back of, of the hook. It doesn't have to be very clean right here. So I'll just nip that off. And the body and the kind of the collar are going to be this ripple ice dub. It's not ripple ice fibers, it's ripple ice dub and this is the, the color of this one's called uh, mother of pearl. So if you can see that it's got a little bit of uh, UV tint to it, a little bit of green UV um, or green flash. Uh, so it's kind of a cool color. And we'll just lay down a very thin body until we get about to here. And then once I, I get up to about that point, I'm going to leave a little bit of room for the head of the fly. I'm going to take just kind of a clump of it like this and wrap very loosely around it twice and then pull down. And that creates a collar around the fly. It's the clump dub technique. And I'll pull all that back and pull those over. So from here, as you can see, I've had to hack my Stompo tool and put new Velcro on it. Um, I'm just going to give it a, a light brush. All right. At this point, I'm ready to tie in the head. And so the bottom, it's going to ride inverted. So the lighter color has to go on this side of the hook and the darker color on top. So I'll take the cream Bruiser Blend Junior and tease that out and tie in a clump right here at the head and you've got to tie it in really close to the bead. So I'll tie that in right here. Just a very thin section of that. And then I'll do the same on the other side with uh, holographic gray. This is literally the text that I just got from my daughter like 500 poop emojis. Thanks, Mia. <laughs> 11 year olds are great. All right. So I'll tie that down, keeping it nice and snug and pushed up against that bead. And then I'll fan it out a little bit. Looks really messy, but I'm basically pulling it out to the sides so that when I push that back, it's going to cover up the sides of the fly. So I'll do that on both top and bottom. some nice and snug thread wraps there and preen those fibers back. So if I want to have a little bit more side coverage I'll grab the fibers on both sides and just kind of tug on them and rotate it back and forth and that will cover up any gaps that we have. Now if you need to you can take a, a comb 
and brush through there. And as you can see, I also put a foam marshmallow on my Stomfo tool because I have sausage hands. All right. So once I have this done, throw a whip finish in that. And another thing I've started to do is kind of hold all the fibers back. And this is where I'm going to put some super glue and resin. So I'm just going to take a lighter and singe away any of those little stray hairs that might be following us around. Okay, so I'm going to take the sepia colored chart pack and kind of put a little bit on there and blend it backward. I'm going to do the same with goldenrod. Push that back and take a black sharpie and just make a, a little bit of a top color and blend it in. Okay, once we get to this point we'll take a fine red sharpie and make some little gills on it. And now we're ready to put the head on. So to make this easier we're using very small eyes and we're kind of jammed in behind this bead so I have some of these curve point needle nose pliers and I'm just going to smash that whole head section flat and it makes for an easier tie-in or an, an easier glue down section for those eyes. So I've got uh, super pearl eyes in eighth inch and before I put those on, before I, what I was doing is put, sticking them on with the adhesive and then uh, putting a really thin resin in between the eyes, but I was finding it was getting harder to stick those eyes in place. They would kind of slip off. So I'm using super glue now, just a very fine coat of it. And I will take those eyes and kind of hopefully get them where they're supposed to be. It's a bit of a challenge here. All right, that's looking pretty good right there. So once we have the eyes in place, we're going to use a thick resin. We're going to use the Loon thick resin to encapsulate those eyes. And now I'm going to just take a, a bodkin and work that resin behind the eyes. So it should just barely go behind the eyes and touch the, the bruiser blend and it will kind of seep into the bruiser blend. That's what I've found makes the most durable eye or head. Now I'm just going to scrape this resin back from the bead a little bit. Try to push it over onto those eyes as much as possible. Now when I have a general idea of how I want it to look, I'm going to give it some rotations and then just hit it with the light and shine it right into the camera lens. So once that's cured, I'm just going to take some really thin resin and put one more layer on top of it. The reason I don't start with thin resin um, is because it would take forever to build up that head. I like the thick resin to be able to just build up a nice round head. So once I have that on there, I'll give it a little cure. And there we have a baby fat minnow. License and registration. Do you know why I pulled you over? I have a mustache now, so I have to talk like that.
<laughs> That's just an outtake. Don't worry, guys. Brigham's just interrupting this video. Brig, come here for a sec. You need to apologize to these people. Come over right here by this vice and tell everybody you're sorry. This is Brigham, and he's sorry for I interrupting. Apologize. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I apologize. Right there. Brigham apologizes. I do. Okay, now, now I you have can't, to listen to Cheech. Sorry. I literally can't tie flies with the elf on the shelf standing behind me. All right? <laughs>